Hello everyone, this is the Hacker 007, and in today's programming video, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about how to contribute to an open source project. So in this video, I wanna cover kind of various ways that you can contribute to an open source project. I also wanna cover kind of the why, the why and the how. Um, so uh, let's, kind of, let's, let's, let's jump into it. Now in the, in the description below, I'll have some timestamps for if you wanna to skip to various parts. So why? Why would you want to contribute to open source projects? Uh, first of all, it's, it's one great way to give back. So open source projects have, open source in general and software world has done a lot for developers. Uh, coding today is significantly easier than it was back in the day. And that is because developers consistently will develop new things and share it. Um, if everyone was to kind of develop their own things and never share, uh, you know, we would not be at the state we are in uh, to today as, as a kind of an engineering or a software world. Um, so open source has really pushed forward and kind of made, in my opinion, the, the barrier to entry a lot lower uh, and have made, so now nowadays developers can build a lot more uh, with a lot less code and a lot faster. The other reason uh, is that it can be fun. And I'd say the last reason is that, you know, it's uh, it can be a good way to learn and build your professional experience if you're looking into getting into the software world. So if you're looking to become a software developer professionally, you know, contributing to open source project is a great way to build your skills as well as put something in your resume uh, for future employers to look at. So if you're, a, you know, if you're a student in school and you start doing a few small open source contributions, it's a great way to learn kind of the workflow of a professional project and it'll put you ahead of your peers when it comes to applying for like a full-time job or maybe even earn, or even an internship. So how can you contribute to an open source project? Now, you don't necessarily have to contribute a code fix or a new feature via code to a project. Now that definitely is one way of doing it and that's one way I'll kind of talk about later in this video. But along with that, I would say there's two other ways you contribute as well. You can contribute by updating documentation so that can be done either through, maybe, maybe it's code documentation, maybe it's architectural documentation, or maybe it's just even a, you know, a updates within the readme of a spelling error. Those are all different ways that you can contribute, uh, kind of documentation wise for a project. Another way you can contribute to a product is by doing a bug report. So uh, if you find an issue in a, well-known framework or product and it's open source, you can file a bug report uh, through, for example, the GitHub interface. And this will, if, you know, if you write a good bug report, it's a great way to kind of help the development team understand what's causing the error. Uh, and then you can also, you know, help them in the future, you know, debug and fix that issue. You know, here on the screen now, I have an example of a well-written bug report on the, Node, on the Node.js project that kind of talks about, you know, what, you know, easy steps to reproduce, how often it happens, what's the expected uh, output versus what's actually happening. You know, a detailed bug report saves uh, the development team a lot of time when they go to actually address and try and fix this issue. And lastly, the, the, you know, or the first one I mentioned, which is kind of submitting a bug fix or a feature fix uh, to a project. And so in this video, I'm gonna be talking more about that specifically and I'll even walk through a sample of kind of changing something and submitting it back to the initial project for, for review. So with that, let's take a look at the uh, node project. So in order to contribute to open source project, you have to find where its source code is. Now, a lot of the time that'll be on GitHub, uh, but not always. Sometimes uh, projects will work off of other repository websites similar to GitHub, such as GitLab or Bitbucket, um, or they might even have their own you know, unique niche one instead. Uh, but a lot of projects do work off GitHub, and so I'll be kind of walking through the GitHub flow, although it'll be very similar to other flows as well. Uh, but, but some products do and will work a slightly differently, uh, so it may not apply to all projects. So let's take a look at this, at the, at this project here. Uh, you know, at the very bottom, you'll have um, some information about the project. This is what I was talking about earlier, where you can actually submit, you know, uh, contributions to the project that may not necessarily be code or, or even in the code at all. You know, you can do documentations, better explain 
uh, you know, readmes and expand on them, um, stuff like that. Now, when you're looking to pick up a new issue to to work on or fix or maybe a new feature, uh, there's a few ways of doing it. You can either submit your own through the issues tab on GitHub, um, or you can find an existing one. Now, while looking for an existing one, I highly recommend looking for one that's kind of already thought out and documented or in some like labels, or maybe haven't added to it. Uh, a really good example that a lot of products have started doing is kind of adding labels uh, such as good, good first issue. Good first issue, if you click that, will filter all the issues that have been assigned the good first issue uh, label. And so what you can do is you can look at these ones and these are most likely issues that the team has said that, you know, they're good issues to address for the first time you're looking at the project. So typically they're a little easier. Uh, a lot of times documentation updates are kind of filed under here. Uh, so you're know, taking a look at this one here, for example, this issue basically says there's no documentation for this specific function. You know, here you can, you can take a look at that as well as they're even asked, they even give you a suggestion, you know, so take, take a look at this one, uh, for instance, for some, for some inspiration. So that is one simple way um, that you can kind of find uh, something to work on. Once you get more experienced and more used to a product, you can take up like more, you know, maybe a little harder ones. Uh, but I would recommend looking at the kind of the good first issues. Uh, but unfortunately, not all products will, will have that label. Another way you can kind of find if you want to work on something is just simply commenting. So you can see here, uh, this guy said you know he'll work on it, and then he has some follow up questions, and then this person's asking. And this person answers with some, you know, stuff like that. So having an open communication line with the development team is a great way to ensure that, you know, when you actually do submit the fix, it is ready to go and you'll even take it in. I would highly recommend, you know, not picking up issues that are like one hour old because uh, sometimes the team hasn't had time to look at it yet and they won't, you know, had time to address it. And sometimes it's not actually an issue. Sometimes people, you know, create issues that are, are you know, just, mistakes on their end. So I would definitely look for issues that are like been responded by the development team and kind of approved already for someone to work on. So let's talk about how now, how we're going to go ahead and actually kind of uh, do something, do a change. And so what I want to do is I actually want to pull up a pull request that I, or a contribution source that I did uh, personally, uh, a few, me a month or two ago, uh, to a Java library called assert J. Uh, assert J is a Java assertion library uh, for testing. So essentially, you know, instead of doing like J unit assert equals, you can use assert J instead. And it's kind of like, in my opinion, a better version. So let's take a look at uh, this product real quick. For example, you know, you'll see here we have the readme, it's always information. Uh, and so a lot of well known or bigger repositories will have a, you know, some kind of section talking about country contributing to the project. Uh, so what they'll, what they'll do is they'll have a contributing uh, MD file. And if you click that, uh, you'll see they have some information about how to contribute to the project. So this project is pretty strict when it comes to the name of tests and how they structure their code. So it's really important that you follow the expectations of the project. If you do not like follow the things that they're talking about in these kind of contribution guides, either they'll just tell you to fix it anyway, or if you just don't follow enough of them, they'll just simply not accept your, wouldn't even bother to review uh, what you've submitted. So it's really important that you do your best to kind of uh, read what they've kind of put, the, put out there and follow it to the best that you can. Another great way is to, uh, to, to, to like make sure your pull request is good to go is to look at old accepted requests of code changes uh, that in the project already and you can use those to base your code off of. Um, so for example, uh, in this one here, uh, I, you know, I added a new type of assertion for a whole new class, the Java time period class. So let's say you wanted to add a new feature to this project that was adding a new assertion to a new class. Well, what you could do is you could look at the pull request that I've created and understand how I did it for X class and do a very similar style change uh, but for a new class instead so if you can you can try and find a project or a 
you know, old accepted change that's somewhat similar to what you're trying to do and then model your changes off of that. So let's take a look a little deeper into this. So um, in, in this request, uh, I follow the checklist, which is, you know, adding, which is saying, you know, I fixed a certain particular issue. Um, you know, I was saying that, yes, I added unit tests and yes, I've added Java docs. And, you know, and I put up a single commit. Uh, what happens now is, the, you know, a person who maintains a project, in this case, Joel, will come in and he'll review uh, my request. So you'll see he'll come in, he'll add uh, various comments on different lines saying what he likes changed. Um, in, for example, in this one here, uh, I had this kind of split out into two lines of code. And he said that, you know, the max length that we do on this project is 130 characters per line. So instead, this should not be two lines, it should be one. And now that's saying, that, may, that might seem very uh, picky to someone, but open source products have to be picked like that because they're accepting changes from all kinds of people. And so if everyone has their own coding style, it makes the project a complete disaster. So they have to be very strict about how they accept code and how it looks and etc. So what happens is Joel will come in and he'll, um, you know, write his comments. Uh, I'll, I'll later come in and I'll change, uh, you know, I'll, I'll add another commit to and push back up, you know, any of the changes that I make based on his feedback. And then this whole thing will happen again and again until the code is at a state where, you know, he will then, you know, the maintainer will then accept it and take it into the repository. So this is a sample of pull request. I, I highly recommend taking a look at it. I'll actually link it uh, below for you to look at. Uh, but now let's talk about actually doing one ourselves now. So let's, let's, let's take a look at the node repository and let's let's, let's, let's pretend to actually do a change here. So what you'll want to do is you'll want to uh, get a copy of this locally. So what you can do is you can go to the, the top right corner here and click the fork. What fork will do is it'll create a copy of this code base on your personal GitHub account. So I'll, I'll click, you know, I'll click my name. GitHub will fork it over. And so now I have a copy of the Node.js code on my personal account. So now what I'll do is I'll clone this locally. Once the code's been cl cloned locally, I'm ready. I'm ready to contribute something. So let's let's just do a simple example where I'm updating the README. Now, this same process really applies to any kind of change, um, but a README change will obviously be a little a little less amount of work. So, uh, let's go ahead and just open uh, the README in something like Notepad++. Uh, and so I'm just going to make a really simple change. You know, I'm just going to add. Uh, the hacker 007, you know, in text to the README. And I'm just going to close that now. Now, if I do uh, get status within the within the repository, you'll see I have a modified file. So now, now, now that I have, so once you've gone and made your changes that you're, you know, and you're ready to go, you can now go ahead and commit that. So what I tend tend to do is kind of create a different branch, uh, just a habit of mine. So what I'll do is I'll just do get checkout. You know, and I'll create a new branch. Now, uh, now I have a new branch, and I have my modified readme file. Let's go ahead and commit. It. So I'll commit this uh, new change, and I'll call it, um, you know, fixed spelling mistake or whatever, you know, and unnecessarily did. Now, once I've kind of, uh, you know, made my change, I can go ahead now and push it up. So in this case, I need to do that. Okay, so now I've pushed up my local change that I wanna see on the repository. Now, if we go back to GitHub, um, what we can do is we can, we can press pull request here. Um, the other way you can do that is by going to the actual node project itself. Um, you, you should even see a notification here, but if you don't see it, you can go to pull requests 
and click uh, new pull request. Either way, you basically want to go to the uh, node here and you want you want to create a pull request. Now, what you need to do is you need to click compare across forks. Uh, and this will let you do is this will let you kind of uh, you know, create a pull request from your repository into this repository um, because you don't have access to it. So if we go to head here, you'll see a lot of different heads. Now you should see yours um, at the top. If you don't, you can search for it. So you can search my name, for example, you should see it. And now I want to choose the branch. So I create a separate branch. And so I'm going to look for that branch and my branch is called new feature. Now, if we see here, we can see that I added the hacker triple seven and I committed that. So that, that's all my really change is. And you can see that my commit message is fixed by mistake. Now, if I go click create pull request, it's going to bring me the kind of menu to create a pull request. Now this is the first time I've done this on this project. So it's going to give you some information like, Oh, Hey, check out the con contributing guidelines. So we, you know, this project as well has their own contribution guidelines on how to actually create a request. Uh, but for now, I'm not going to read that for now, just because I'm, I'm not going to actually create this pull request. I'm just kind of walking through how you would go through it. Through it. Um, so they have some predefined stuff in here. So it talks about saying thanks for creating one. Please describe, you know, put a description and review the requirements, um, as well as they have a checklist here. So you can basically put little X's in here. Uh, so in this case, it's documentation change. So I was doing X there, um, and you can go through and make sure that you have done everything required. You can click preview to ensure that it looks good. Uh, and then when you're done, you can click create. And that's essentially all you have to do to kind of create that initial request to have a code change it. Now looking back at my pull request ahead, you can tell that even once a code request, has, my pull request is created, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm done and there's still more work to be done. So for example, I created the uh, request on June 3rd. It was not taken in to the repository until June 17th. So it took a whole fifth or 14 days in order for this, this request to get taken into the project. So that's kind of uh, my high level walkthrough of how to contribute to open source. Now I know this video is a little, uh, maybe a little advanced for people who are, are very beginners, uh, but I recommend, you know, commenting below if you have any questions and I can try and help answer them. Uh, but that's kind of it for this video. So I, I hope this was a good video for you guys. I, this is again, my, my first programming video. So uh, I hope you guys liked it uh, again. Uh, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Uh, this video is a little long, uh, so <laughs> sorry for that. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you guys, I hope this gave you enough information uh, on how to kind of get the basic understanding of how to contribute to open source project. Uh, but like I said, the biggest thing really is just understanding the project you want to contribute to. So that can be, you know, reading documentation for that civic repository. With that said though, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video. This is Dr. 007 and I am signing off.